Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Today we will talk about cardiotocography, which is a continuous recording of the fetal heart rate obtained via ultrasound transducer placed on the mother's abdomen. Understanding CTG is very important because if changes are detected on CTG, steps can be taken to help treat the underlying problem. Fetal heart rate monitoring can also help us in uh, prevention of the treatments that are not needed. CTG is widely used in pregnancy as a method of assessment of fetal well-being, predominantly in pregnancies with increased risk of complications. We have other tests for assessment of fetal well-being as well, which include partograph by physical profile. And you can find its link in the I button in the top right corner of this video. So what are the indications of CTG? We have certain maternal indications and fetal indications. Um, among the maternal indications we have, first of all, the maternal medical disorder, secondly, bad obstetric history and thirdly, post date pregnancy. So in what maternal medical disorder we need to do the CTG, those include pregnancy induced hypertension. Secondly, diabetes mellitus, then anemia with other hematological disorder, chronic hypertension, chronic disease, collagen disease, renal disease and thyroid disease. Among the fetal indications, we would include the reduced fetal movement, suspected IUGR, abnormal fetal heart rate on auscultation, multiple pregnancy, racist isoimmunization and we do CDG before induction of the labor. Now coming to the division of the CTG, based upon the different patterns on CTG strip, uh, we divide CTG into three main categories. First is reassuring, non-reassuring and abnormal. So what is reassuring CTG? Reassuring CTG is the one in which the baseline fetal heart rate lies in the range of 110 to 160 beats per minute. Here you can see in this CTG that uh, this heart rate is within 110 to 160 beats per minute. So that is reassuring uh, sign. Second point, baseline variability of 5 to 25 beats per minute. Here you can see in this CTG the baseline variability varies between 5 to 25 beats per minute and it is normal and deceleration shouldn't be present in the uh, reassuring ctg but if even uh, if we find the deceleration those should be early if early decelerations are present that is also the reassuring sign and if we uh, find the variable deceleration but uh, having no characteristic features for less than 90 minutes that is also included in the reassuring CTG. Now, what are the signs of non-reassuring CTG? In non-reassuring CTG, the baseline fetal heart rate lies in the range of either 100 to 109 or 160 to 180 beats per minute. So here you can see uh, we have the tachycardia means the fetal heart rate of uh, more than 160. And here in this picture, we have the fetal heart rate in the range of 100 to 109. Second feature is about baseline variability. If it is less than 5 for up to 30 to 50 minutes or more than 25 for 15 to 25 minutes, uh, that is also non-reassuring sign of the CTG. Let us talk about variable decelerations in non-reassuring CTG. Variable deceleration with no uh, concerning characteristics for 90 minutes or more indicate the non-reassuring CTG or variable deceleration with any characteristic features in up to 50% of contraction for 30 minutes or more. Okay, so if we have any concerning characteristics, then uh, even if it is um, of 30 minutes, then we will consider it as non-reassuring CTG or the variable deceleration with any uh, concerning characteristics in over 50% of contraction for less than 30 minutes or late deceleration in 50% of the contraction for less than 30 minutes with no maternal or fetal uh, clinical risk factors such as vaginal bleeding or significant meconium. Now let us discuss the abnormal CTG. In abnormal CTG, the baseline fetal heart rate is either below 100 or above 180 beats per minute. Secondly, the baseline variability is either less than 5 for 50 minutes or more than 25 for 25 minutes. The third uh, feature is that of the sinusoidal pattern. The sinusoidal pattern, if present in CDG, indicates abnormal CTG. Now, let us talk about the variable decelerations in abnormal CTG. 
in abnormal ctg the variable deceleration uh, with any correct, uh, concerning characteristics in over 50 percent of contraction for 30 minutes are there or less if any maternal or fetal clinical risk factors or late deceleration for 30 minutes or less if any maternal or fetal clinical factors or acute pericardia or single prolonged deceleration lasting for three minutes or more so all these are abnormal features on ctg let us discuss the management based upon the interpretation of ctg how to manage a case of normal ctg by normal ctg we means that all the features are reassuring in that case, first of all, we have to uh, talk to the woman and her birth companion about what is happening. And we have to continue CTG unless it was started because uh, of concern arising from intermittent auscultation. And there are no uh, risk factors and the usual care is provided. Okay. And talking to the woman counseling of the patient is definitely very important. How to manage a case of suspicious CTG? By suspicious CTG, we mean we have one non-reassuring feature and two reassuring feature. So in that case, we have to correct any underlying cause such as hypertension or uterine hyperstimulation. Secondly, we have to perform a full set of maternal observation, then start one or more conservative measures, then inform an obstetrician or senior midwife, then we have to document a plan for reviewing the whole clinical picture and CTG findings. Then we have to talk to the woman and her birth companions about uh, what is happening and uh, we will take her preferences into account as well. Let us discuss a case of pathological CTG in which we have one abnormal feature or two non-reassuring feature. In that case, we have to obtain a review by obstetrician and senior midwife. Then we have to exclude the acute event, for example, the cord prolapse, suspected placental abruption or suspected uterine rupture. Okay, and um, then we would try to correct any underlying cause such as the hypotension or uterine hyperstimulation. Then we would start the conservative management along with counseling of the woman and her birth companion. Okay, so talk to the woman and obtain a further review by obstetrician or senior midwife and then offer fetal uh, scalp stimulation. And if CTG stress is still uh, pathological after fetal scalp stimulation, then we have to consider the fetal blood sampling or expediting the birth and uh, take women's preferences into account. Now, how to manage a case of acute bradycardia or a single prolonged deceleration on CTG? First of all, we have to call for help. Urgently seek obstetric help. Secondly, expedite delivery if there has been any acute event, for example, cord prolapse or suspected placental abruption or suspected uterine prolapse, etc. Thirdly, correct any underlying cause like hypotension or uterine hyperstimulation. Then start the conservative management. Then expedite the birth if acute bradycardia persists for nine minutes. If the heart rate uh, recurs at any time up to nine minutes, then we have to reassess um, any decision, reassess the whole situation. And after a discussion with the woman, we have to plan accordingly. So that was um, a little bit about the um, CTG. I have taken references from the NICE guideline about the intrapartum care. And I would like to complete my presentation with this quote that keep your face always toward the sunshine and shadow will fall behind you. When you can't find the sunshine, be the sunshine and create your own sunshine. So thank you so much. Wish you best of luck. Allah Hafiz.